First, the National Cancer Institute is using their expertise in virology, immunology, and lab medicine, and supported by funding from this Congress, to evaluate and improve serology testing. Serology testing is based on the idea that we can look through your immune system's playbook to see whether your body has produced antibodies that respond to this virus. Such a serology test has the potential to tell generally how widespread a disease has been, but it's critical that such a test be validated to make sure it's sufficiently sensitive and specific. You don't want a test out there that's giving the wrong information. The tests are getting better and better. At the moment, we still do not know for sure, however, whether someone with a prior infection with SARS-CoV-2 and who is antibody positive is completely resistant to reinfection, and if so, how long such immunity will last. The answer to those questions are being intensively studied. Right. Once that information is in hand, we'll be in a better position to advise people about the meaning of a positive antibody test. Second, and most directly relevant for this hearing, NIH launched a COVID-19 initiative called Rapid Acceleration of Diagnostics, or RADx, uh, just last week, as you heard from the chairman. Most current testing for the virus depends on detection of the viral RNA genome using the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. A PCR test takes a small code of DNA or RNA, amplifies it millions of times over so that it can be detected, but that amplification process is time-consuming, requires a thermal cycling machine available only in laboratory settings in general, and needs personnel who know how to run the test and how to troubleshoot problems. I'm missing it right now. Just this program, RADx, uh, supported by uh, the funding from the Congress, seeks to expand the range of diagnostic technologies to include a whole bunch of novel approaches that can rapidly expand access to testing. RADx is engaging scientists across the country, from the basement to the boardroom, uh, in an effort to improve current tests and advance completely new technologies. As America moves back into public spaces but seeks to avoid increased infections with COVID-19, tests have to be more accessible, ideally to people at the point of care, to make it easier for everyone to get tested. We need tests that don't require hours or days to determine results. The new types of tests need to be sensitive enough to flag asymptomatic individuals who may have just become infected and don't even know it yet. They must be reliable and have a user-friendly design. They must utilize various types of samples, including saliva. And ideally, they should be able to integrate with mobile devices to process and show results and transmit data seamlessly. And above all, they need to be accessible to everyone. So how should we inspire this outpouring of new technologies? How can we unleash the legendary American ingenuity at this time of great public urgency? How will we provide the resources to accelerate development, scale up, and deployment of new and powerful testing platforms? Our approach, which Senators Alexander and Blunt recently compared to a shark tank, is diagrammed on this slide, where you can see a bunch of light bulbs your comment from Thomas Edison uh, seems relevant here. Uh, light bulbs that maybe have promise or maybe uh, they need some work. Well, this is what's going to be happening with this RADx initiative. It occurs in three phases. First of all, there is a call for innovative technologies. That went out last week on April 28th. Phase zero, though, requires uh, they, a, a review be done of what the responses were to that call to be sure that they fit this model. Phase zero is then a rapid evaluation of the technology over the course of only about a week by clinical, technical, business, regulatory, and manufacturing experts. Expert review boards covering scientific, clinical, regulatory, and business domains are going to rapidly evaluate these proposals, looking for the gems that provide real promise for COVID-19. Uh, those promising early stage technologies will initially move then to phase one, where we will make a modest award of funds while simultaneously supporting that inventor or company with technical and clinical experts to address any scientific or business weaknesses identified in the review. Already well-developed technologies can actually go directly to phase two. We don't want to hold anybody back, and it's possible that some of these arrivals in the shark tank are already big enough fish that they're ready to move on, and we will support that as well. 
providing scale-up for tests for validation. We have to know it works, meeting regulatory requirements, supporting manufacture and distribution, working closely with our colleagues at BARDA. In that regard, we're interested in approaches that can substantially increase throughput and accessibility of laboratory-based tests, even though the ultimate goal of RADx is to develop and deploy point-of-care tests. So to tell you the update, as you heard, the RADx solicitation was just announced last week. This is day eight since that came out. We're allowing submissions of proposals on a rolling basis. I got to say, I'm delighted and somewhat astounded <laughs> that as of noon yesterday, there were 1,087 applications initiated, 79 of those already complete. They had to provide a lot of details. In 27 years at NIH, I have honestly never seen anything move this quickly. The expert review team already in place has identified 20 of these completed applications that are ready to move into that first phase of intense scrutiny, and the game is on, and it's going to be a wild ride. Before I close, though, I want to tell you about the third part of our initiative, a major focus on implementation of strategies to enable testing of rural, underserved, and under-resourced populations, among the hardest hit by the coronavirus, and often those for which testing has been less available. This effort, which we're calling RADx Up, up as in underrepresented populations, will include the development of a centers program, that will allow demonstration projects to be put in place across the country in places where COVID-19 has hit hardest and where testing has thus far been accessible. It will also include a program focused on the ethical, legal, and social issues associated with COVID-19 diagnostic testing and ways to try to avoid the inequities associated with unequal access. So to conclude, the goal of RADx is to help make millions more accurate and easy to use tests per week available to all Americans by the end of summer and even more in time for the flu season. I must tell you, Senators, that this is a stretch goal that goes well beyond what most experts think will be possible. I have encountered some stunned expressions when describing these goals and this timetable to knowledgeable individuals. The scientific and logistical challenges are truly daunting. But I remain optimistic because of the track record of American ingenuity and the outpouring that has already happened of great ideas coming into this shark tank. So at NIH, we believe that putting the best minds in the world together is the only way to meet the challenge and to bring this virus under control. 